Good morning, everybody. BTC Simmer here with you. Afternoon, good evening, good night, no matter where you may be. Where, no matter where you may be. I'm here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Of course. Either that, or Rust, or something. You know me. BTC Simmer. <laughs> Alright guys, before we get to anything, before we get to anything today, you're probably wondering, what the heck is he sitting in? Well, figure that out shortly. We'll get to the price. Price BTC today, guys. I haven't shot a video with voice in a few days, so bear with me. Had a good day the other day on Rust, and uh, took a relaxed day yesterday. No Sunday fun flight yesterday, so we're just going to do a... Uh, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do in a minute. We'll get to the price. Price BTC, guys. 27443 American at the moment. So, 27443, that amounts to around 36,961 Canadian. 36,961 Canadian. He just got a little raise. If you earn in Bitcoin, he just got a little raise. And the drop from the big bad 30, 31. Anyway. Remember guys, 1 BTC is 1 BTC. Long time preference. Long time preference. Bitcoin is for decades, years, years upon years. All right, you know, um, generational stacking leads to generational wealth, as it should. And if you have an emergency, you know, you absolutely know your cold stored Bitcoin will be there. All right, guys, let's pop some headlines here before we get into anything exciting. <laughs> Bitcoin struggles above 27K injective nosedives, 12% daily market watch. Mm -hmm. Write that up in the... Uh, Bitcoin obituary. If you go to, I think it's actually Bitcoin obituaries. Google that and it shows how many times Bitcoin has died. <laughs> Excuse me. Bitcoin price could resume increase, but 100 SMA is the key. I don't know about that. Uh, you can't really plot its its course. It's uh, it's been tried. <laughs> Let's see what else is here. Price crawls 2.5% off lows as weekly chart risks bearish engulfing. Guys, it's it's gonna go up. It's it does this. It ebbs and flows. You know, you're better off to catch these ebbs than you are to uh, part with your precious coin. N never part with your coin unless you absolutely have to. All right, take advantage of these. Remember, you're getting a raise. You're getting a raise when it's every time a drop. All right. All right, guys, let's get to the video. Today we're uh, going to have a look at the CRJ550 from Aerosoft. I know, Aerosoft. I know, I went back. Went back to Aerosoft after the uh, Twin Otter. Um, sitting in the, probably the middle of the 550. No, near the back. 550, just, uh, just behind the wing. We're here at Birmingham. Just a stock Microsoft Flight Simulator Birmingham. We're sitting at, uh, I believe, it is gate 23, 22, one of the two. Um, we're not going to do any flying today. We're going to jump out and have a walk around, look at the CRJ, have a look through the cabin, have a look at the uh, cockpit. Hopefully power it up and get it ready to uh, ready to go under its own power. But uh, about, as far, that's about as far as we're going to go today. Hopefully I'll get a flying video in tomorrow. Um, I plan to go from here, Birmingham to Inverness with uh, some mission uh, jobs from on air. So anyway, with all that said, oh, and one other thing, I guess the uh, world update 13 is coming along. That's uh, gonna include Oceania, Hawaii and Antarctica. How cool, Antarctica. I mean, yeah, Oceania and Hawaii, that's uh, quite amazing, but the uh, Mystic Antarctica. I'll have to check out all those areas. Um, I think they're bringing a... So what does it say here? 14 bespoke airports and airstrips. Hawaiian Islands, uh, Oceania, Antarctica. I think they're bringing another aircraft too. I want to say... I'm not 100% sure. Nearby New Zealand and Australia. That's going to be amazing, guys. It's going to be amazing. All right. 
Okay, let's jump on in and have a look around. This is the cabin of the 550. No, oh, it does have one. It's not, uh... Doesn't have, like, super textures or anything. Nothing too crazy. I'm here at the back already, so... Can't go through that door. There's no... Lavatory... Or washroom, or whatever you want to call it. Here's the exit aisle here. So it's a... 50-seater airplane. See, it's split up into okay, it's two classes here, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, I don't fly much. <laughs> Front of the cabin here, service door, and then the uh, boarding door, stairs, hook up to a jetway. Right, pop out this way. The port side. I'm just running the uh, private low uh, livery. So, it's got Captain Hans. I believe we're looking at the probe here. One of the probes or the pitot tubes. Not 100% sure. Heated probe, there's the probe. Alright. So you can take these stairs on and off when you have the uh, jetway come along. It's an option in the EFB. EFB is like the tablet. It comes with the airplane. Emergency lights there. Nice cargo door here. I don't know if I'd want to ride in there though. <laughs> See the landing lights decently modeled. Leading edge of the wing. And the wing tips. And I'm running FSLTL, so see some traffic around here. And navigation lights here. And the trailing edge, the shockers. All the control surfaces, and I mean, it's pretty decently done. We're talking Aerosoft here, so let's not give them too much credit, right? <laughs> Another cargo hold back here. This one you might be able to stand up in. I'm not sure, maybe not. <laughs> Still wouldn't want to ride back there. Right under the engine here. These are, uh, what do they call them? General Electrics. General Electric Turbofans. Alright, back here to the APU, see the skid plate here, APU up here, APU door there, the rudder, the elevator, tail fin, and the right engine. More emergency lights here on this side, the starboard side. Trailing edge of the wing, the wing tips, wing tips look good. Navigation lights again, leading edge. And there's your landing and taxi. And we can have a look at the gear too while we're down here. Much larger gear than the otter. Obviously. Fuel drain there. Only way I know what that is because it says it on it. <laughs> gear stowage. <coughs> and here's your service door and that says hot so you probably wouldn't touch that keep away danger heated probe and of course more probes along here let's see what that is another one heated probe heated probe I don't know which one I think that one's a pedo here nope pedo is the one that uh, shoots off there nose has a unique look. The windows almost wrap around when you're looking straight at the nose. Seems like a busy day at Birmingham. Here's the nose gear storage. Stow, stow away, and the lights. Light. And come up here, you can see that uh, the escape hatch modeled. And obviously a few other things for communication. Beacon light up there. That's the outside of the uh, CRJ 550. So I think it's a beautiful aircraft. Um, I think Mitsubishi owns it now. I think they uh, manufacture them. Um, we'll go over a few specs here, then we'll hop inside. So 
Let's see, two General Electric uh, CF348C1 turbofan engines. Power 13,790 pound force. Max cruise speed 473 knots. Just gonna enjoy my coffee here while it's still warm, guys. Fuel economy, so what does it have? Uh, 1378 for nautical miles. Service ceiling 41,000 feet. Rate of climb 2,000 feet per minute. Alright, uh, takeoff is 5,265 feet and landing is 5,039. I don't know if that's weight dependent or what. But we'll go to the dimensions now. So a 50 seater. Um, Cabin height's 6.2 feet. Cabin width is 8.37, so just under 8.4. Cabin length is 56 feet, 0.69er. Exterior length total is 105 feet. Tail height is 24 feet, so it's just well, just under 25, 24.93. So it's almost 25 feet from the ground to the top of that. Um, fuselage diameter is 8.86 feet. Wingspan is 76.11. So from left to right wing, you're looking at 76.11, so that's pretty substantial from what I'm used to. And uh, wing tips, canted winglets, all right. Let's see what else I can read for you on here. Max takeoff weight's 74,000 pounds, I think it's at 65 and on air. Payload's around 18,000. Fuel tank's 11,356 liters, 3,000 gallons. Baggage volume is 547 cubic feet. It's enough baggage, I think, for the passengers. Alright, shall we hop inside and uh, have a look? Maybe fire it up? Let's do it. Alright. Alright, so you can see the cabin's pretty well, or the cockpit's pretty well done. Uh, got fuses, they're not modeled. Um, there is this fuel tank thing up here. You can actually feel the fuel from here, refuel in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You wouldn't want to do that with uh, any third-party apps, so you let them uh, them decide your weights and fuel. So you got a couple banks of breakers here. You can see they're all labeled A through H. And then the rest of them over here. More behind the first officer seat there, and I believe there's more behind the captain's seat. So the thing with the CRJ uh, flight deck is getting into the seats. So from what I've heard on tutorials, getting into these seats is the hardest thing for the real world pilots. They gotta step over and jump on in. Once you're in there, I'm sure it's fine, but I guess that's maybe why they call it the sports car. Kind of like a sports car, they call it. All right, lots of storage space over here. <coughs> Make sure you'd have your paperwork readily available. All right, let's get started here. Okay, so first things first, and I wrote out some flows here, just so I don't get all mixed up. All right jump into our cockpit view here. Okay, so when I first come in here, I check the gear, make sure it's down. Gear's right here. Check the parking brake, make sure it's up. Just a pull and twist. Then go ahead and just go over everything. Make sure there's nothing on that's gonna surprise you when you put any power to the aircraft. Everything's looking pretty fine. Spoilers and flaps. Put there in the right places. Um, showed you where the breakers are back here. And just have a quick glance at the upper panel there. After all, it is Flight Simulator. You can take some shortcuts or you can play it as real as you like. Um, a lot of things are modeled in this aircraft, so fly at her if you like. All right, so it looks pretty good to me. So with that, we'll go ahead and turn on our master. You'll see some lights come on here. Your fuel pumps are off, uh, air conditioning packs are off, and a couple displays fire up. 
we got lots of cautions here and stuff. Let me just get rid of those for now. This is the EFB here, the tablet that comes with the aircraft. And so right after that, you'd come down here and you'd turn these to nav, to IRS for your GPS system, track the airplane. You'd come up here and you'd start your flow. So you go from here, come this way, and then generators, make sure they're all auto. Nav lights, you can turn those to on. Um, hydraulics, check all those pumps. Should all be auto. And number two just goes to on. And with that, you can go ahead and start your APU. Your APU is right in the middle here. So you're going to want to press that button there. That'll open up the uh, door. Door's closed right now. I'll say APU SOV open on the top there. Now it says APU door open. So Little door on the back of the aircraft. I don't know if we'll be able to catch it opening or closing, but I'll be able to show you it. See it right here? Right there. I if my mouse is in the right area, but see that flap open there? So with that door open, that should let us power it up. Door closed. No, I want the door open. What's going on here? Yeah, then you got to click start. That's what it is. There we go. Yeah, no, I kind of mucked that up. So you'd go uh, this one first. Check down here when it says open. Then head over to the one that said start there and hit start. So... Do that, and then uh, while that's spooling up, we'll check, uh, make sure our fuel boosts are off. I think they are. We check those. Um, check the ECS button down here. There, you got the APU on now, and you can see that it's powered up here. Sending power around. Okay, so we can configure our pressure as well for our landing aerodrome if we were to fly somewhere today, which, which we're not, but... You can do that right up here, cabin pressures. So there you go, 160 feet I got in there. Um, we can turn on our air conditionings now, turn on the packs, turn on our circulating fan, and the window heat. Those are both right here. And we can arm the emergency lights. Passenger signs, you can put those on. And then go ahead and set our barometers. So those, you can set those right down here. Um, 1013 right now, uh, you can set that with this. So you can set the captains, then you can set the standby right here. And same over here on the uh, co-pilot first officer bar over right here. But you can also do the flight simulator trick and just press B when you're on the ground. And sure enough, it'll set all three of them for you. So there's that. I think. Press B again, see what happens. Yeah. Come down here, check your trim stabilizers. Mock trim. Engage your yaw dampers as well. And your transponder's right up here, so go ahead and mess with that. We're not flying today, but this is how you, how you do that. Display, squawk display, all right. So then you come to the CDU fun part. All right, and it is the fun part. It's the hardest, hardest part for me to learn. All right, so you go position in it, position in it. So 
set position. So FMS position is, is this one here, but we'll put in uh, E G B B airport. And we'll grab this here. So that's the airport, but this is our actual position, I believe. Lined up with our IRS. Take that. Go to where were we at here? Put it here. And we'll go back here to next page. Update from Navi, Navi, right? GNS one, so yeah, there we go. That's the same thing, yeah. All right, go to the flight plan page here, and then go ahead with all your particulars. Let's say we're going to Inverness, G, P, E, and alternate, we'll throw in WIC, E, G. Get rid of our spoilers here, they're gonna be in the way. Originating runway. Uh, I guess we can go execute that. Performance. Get all this performance info from your EFB here. So let's just copy all this over. So you can, I'm not gonna mess with any of this right now, but just go to here, copy. Makes it nice and easy, or you can manually do it. Either or. Set your cruise altitude. Say we're at 240, flight level 240, alternate zero fuel. With all that put in, you can go VNAV setup. Transition, I'm not sure what transition is down here. Let's say it's 6,000. This is set up for the states, obviously, North America. Um, that looks fine. Check the next page, it looks fine. Next page, is that descent? Sure, we'll leave it there. 50 and 10,000, that seems seems right. I'll just go execute there. Execute that. Departure and arrival. Say we're departing runway 33. I'll execute and we'll go departure arrival again. Arrival, we'll go ILS, say 05. Execute that. There you go, some stuff has appeared here up on the screen. And you can also set your actual arrival and departure. I'm not doing that right now, but... Go back to flight plan, and we can see here, there's two pages here, so... Via I-05 to FI-05. So... So you can also put in waypoints if you want. Let's say you want to put in an old of one. It's called Inbass. Inbass. Waypoints you want to put in over here. Direct. Go execute. I'll fly there. All right. That is pretty much that. We can go to the legs page now and check that out. Let's discontinue. Discontinuity. CL5. So just. Copy that into here and put it there. Boom. Missed approach. <laughs> We've got an bass here. Hold that. Alright, so obviously I'm not setting this up properly, but uh, you get the picture. Alright. Legs, check for discontinuities. Execute. Okay, so we can come back to our EFB here, and see our takeoff speeds for our weights. Right here, V1, VR, rotate, V2. We can go set all, and that'll send it to the P 
PFD here, you can see it change. So the uh, rotate is 125, verify that there, rotate 125, good, good. So where am I here? I'm just looking at my notes I took down. So yeah, and you can go back here. Stats your default button here. Got our APU powered up. Okay, I think at this point you could probably close the doors. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the captain and crew, welcome aboard this flight. We hope you enjoy flying with us. Before takeoff, we would like to encourage all passengers to watch our cabin crew display the safety features of the aircraft. Alright. So yeah guys, I'm just quickly running through this to get it powered up. And uh almost like a super quick tutorial, but not quite. <laughs> so we got the door shut, chocks are away, and uh beacon light we'll throw that on. Park break. I don't know why I got written down. Oh, because we're what you do here is push back, but what we will do here is we'll start the engines here. So we can go with our right engine, so we can turn on the boost pumps. I think you can turn them both on right now. I don't think it's a big deal. And you just go here. So boost pumps on, engine R, start. Come down here, have a look. And you're going to want your N2 to power up to 18 to 20 percent. Once that happens, you'll come down to your fuel thrust lever here. Hit the red thing up, push it forward to idle. And it should power up. There we are at 18. Add to idle. We'll watch and see what happens there. All right, so that uh, that right engine's powered up there. See, it's looking good and stabilizing. Probably go right up to. You. Ladies and gentlemen, please pay attention as we display the safety features and procedures of the aircraft in case of an emergency. During an emergency, please remain in your seats with your seat belts fastened and your seats in the upright position. In case of a drop in cabin pressure, breathing masks will drop from the ceiling and should be placed over your head. If there is smoke in the cabin during the evacuation of the aircraft, the walkway emergency lights will display to the exits which are located here and here. In case of an extreme emergency landing, you will be instructed to get into the brace position which is executed by placing your head between your knees with your hands over your head. We would also like to remind you that you should turn off all electronic devices. We thank you for paying attention during this brief presentation. There you go, you get announcements as well. How about that? Okay, same thing with the left engine. So the engine starts very basic. It's not anything crazy. It's just you have to have the power turned on and uh, certain things in certain ways. See it's spooling up fine there. Oil pressure's building. Looking good. look at this too and it shows you all your waypoints. FD. Alright, at this point you turn on your flight director. Engage that. Cross flow, you'd turn that on. It's just for in balance. I think it's, it's that one there. Open. Am I right? Could be wrong. <laughs> and you could probably ditch your APU now. Go ahead and stop that. Running off the engine power, you can see it wind down there. 
Make sure your probes are on. Probes are... No, not there. Probes. Go ahead with the taxi lights. Turn logo lights on if you want. Where are they? They're right here. Those are landing lights over there. And your nose wheel steering toggles over here. It should be armed. And your reverse thrusters. Arm those. They are right here. Left and right. And you're ready to taxi. You can take your handbrake. Put that down and out of the way. That's it, and we're already moving. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think that's where I'm going to leave the video for today. Um, just taking it nice and slow and easy with the uh, CRJ. It's a complex plane, and there's a lot to it. So, on the next one, we'll fire up uh, from right here, and we'll be heading to Inverness. It's the next plan for the next video. All right, guys. Remember, stack them sats. Have an awesome day. Thanks for watching, and thanks for all the likes, subscriptions lately, and uh, everything else. Take care, guys.